tyranid warriors and primes, the hate of the tyranid hive mind. I plot their path, their actions. But there is no time to activate a call that will reach aid. I cannot merely do what I would do so often and call in some kill team's support. We are past that stage now. They are here. And they... They are doing what they do. Consuming everything. Once, I was close with one of the greatest inquisitors of my order, Ordo Xenos. Now, I realize... I've even breathed these words as admiration. I could be put to the task myself, for he is no longer in good standing with our order. He is hunted. He is reviled. Those who deride or denigrate him, they are jealous. They are nothings. For he, Cryptman, was right. He was always right. But in this, more than anything else, he was dead on the nose. For it cannot be denied. The tyranny is the greatest threat to the Imperium, to humanity at large. Many will say it is the green skin, but they are most often localized nuisances. Some will look to the previous might of the Eldar, stating we should finish them off in case they resurge. They ruled the galaxy once. But we have been told to avoid this issue now, from very high above. Strange that it coincides with the return of a Primarch. Perhaps he is not who he states he is. For if he loved the Eldar so much, perhaps he is an imposter. For why would a son of the Emperor protect their foul degenerate kind? Some say it is the sheened metallic legions of the Necrons. One of my peers, Barabbas, stated he had studied them, had found out their secrets, would find their king even. He stated that their monarch had awoken, and that this colleague stated that the Necrons, rising from a deep sleep of millions of years, that they were older than even the Eldar. Poppycock, I say. They are merely those who hid from the Great Crusade in worlds and systems without Mandeville points, separated from the warp lanes. In the dark. This is where they come from. This is my belief. But I have no time for those distractions. Dalliances with impeding doom. When there is a real threat to our entire existence. The Great Devourer. The Tyranid Hive Fleet. The Tyranid Vanguard organisms can hide amongst our very populations. Did you know that? Yes, few do. That something so alien, so cursed, could inveigle itself into our society. But that is a thought for another day, for I am somewhat busy at present. With a war I should not be fighting myself. But I was tardy. I did not get us out of here early enough. And so we are trapped here. And so I give the best assistance I can. I attach myself to the command staff. And I advise. We use auto-targeting arrays and the best of our gunners. I direct them to the most threatening bioforms. We annihilate the most obvious leaders of the Horde. Yet somehow, they maintain cohesion. Unlike before, they do not break and run, do not scatter from us and become easy prey. Amongst their numbers are commanders holding their force together, but I cannot even discern which of the throng they could be. So we fight. We fight hard, but it is not going as I had hoped. 
This will not be a victory. I know this. But I can make it harder for those things. Those filthy Xenos. And as an adherent of Lord Cryptman, I know that this will make a difference. Perhaps not today. Perhaps not for a hundred years. But all of these delays to the onward rush of the filth gives our kind more of that which we need the most. Time. We will unlock the riddle of the Tyranids, and we, humanity, will be victorious over them. We just need more time, and that is what I shall fight to gain. Time. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and units of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace, there is only time for war. And if you enjoy my little tap dance, do hit us with a like and a comment or a coin via Super Thanks, and know that we do mythology and dinosaurs too. Links in the descriptions. And today, we take a brief look at one of the most interesting facets of the warrior organisms of the Tyranid Hive fleet. The backbone of any army is its infantry, and the backbone of the hierarchy of any force is its chain of command. So today, we shall be discussing the Tyranid warriors and the leader beasts that are similar to these creatures the Tyranid Prime. Before we get into the drier nuts and bolts of the situation, and how new revelations show the Tyranids are not what most people perceive them to be, an endless eating machine with no direction or purpose but to continue their existence. Something I myself have had to realign from my older videos on the matter. The Tyranids. As stated in the core release footage for 10th edition of Warhammer 40k, they are now finally being seen as the real threat to the Imperium. Oh, the Necrons are arisen, are marching out in their millions to face all around them. The Tau grow in technological power every day, in every way. The Kin, the Leagues of Votan, sit in their high gravity center of the galaxy, but are beginning to venture out again. The Eldar float through the void in their dwindling city ships known as craft worlds, but could replenish their numbers in an instant if they would merely utilize the technology so oft employed by their terrible kin, the Eladrithanese, the Dark Eldar. Men of Iron could be found and reinitiate the cybernetic revolt. All things are possible. Yet, despite how grim and utterly dark any of these eventualities are, no matter how terrible and callous the foes listed above, they cannot presently even hold a candle to the burning fire that is tearing through the galaxy, consuming all in its path, seemingly without rhyme or reason to the casual observer. The analogy of a fire with the Tyranids is so apt, for they take everything from any system they infest and digest. Then they move on, leaving behind barren, lifeless systems, they are the greatest threat to the Imperium and to the entirety of mankind. And the Tyranids are not to be taken lightly. They have humbled the Eldar, and the most important sign of this, the destruction of Yandan, we shall get to another day if there is an appetite to hear this doleful tale. They took the pride of the Eldar, the greatest and most powerful, prolific and connected craft world, and they turned it into an abattoir. Empty chairs and empty tables indeed, the mammoth vessel now all but devoid of life. Hundreds of miles of honeycomb walkways and idyllic gardens and residences, now the haunting realms of the dead. They did this to the Eldar. And the Tyranids are in a never-ending war of attrition in the Octaria sector. Their ability to replenish and diversify their hordes matched against the never-ending spores and aggression of the bellicose greenskins. 
But if they can meet the orcs face to face, toe to toe, and come out of this war, then they will be far more powerful than they ever were before. The escalation being felt on both sides. The high fleets evolve deadlier and deadlier bio horrors every day, even as the orcs develop their might of old. An unenviable position for any who are on the receiving end from anything that comes out from this apocalyptic confrontation. The Necrons, lords of the galaxy when it was young, have come out of their sleep as planned. But what they did not contend with, had no way of predicting, was the advent of the great devourer, the Tyranids. And it is known that the Silent King himself, the lord of all Necrons, rushed back from his intergalactic sojourn, for one reason and one reason only, to wake his people, to unify his warriors, to prepare them for the war to end all wars. The attempted repulsion of the Tyranid fleets from a galaxy they consider solely their own. He did that. He came back from leaving this galaxy purely to stop the bugs. Just imagine that. And the Imperium, finally, is now the greatest roadblock to the encroaching tendrils of the High Fleet. They nearly took Macrag, the ancient home world of the Ultramarines. They almost took Baal, the dwelling of the Blood Angels. They are moving slowly but surely, making their way to Holy Terror itself, to strike at the center of power of all humanity. But more worrying by far is the simple realization none of this is an accident. None of it. The Tyranids have been viewed like a swarm of locusts, rapaciously consuming all in their path like a mindless hive of insects. That they were drawn to high-density populations and other stars where biomass was in rich supply. That they reached this galaxy at all, due to either the light of the Astronomicon or the explosion of the Pharos Beacon so long ago. That, like an intergalactic moth, the Tyranids are merely being drawn to the flame that burns brightest. But this may not be the case. Or at least, it no longer appears to be the entire truth. The recent activities of the Hive Fleets has put pay to this simplistic view of them, and the reality of the matter is chilling. As we now know from the devastation of Baal, this is no coincidence at all. The Hive Mind is watching everything that the fleets do watching and learning. Perhaps this has been related before, perhaps not. But the most important thing that has come to light is that the hive mind, it is far more similar to the residents of the Milky Way galaxy than previously thought. For it can know anger. It can recognize enemies. And it can hate. The move on to the Baal system was not a line of sweeties being strung out to lead to that point. Baal is not particularly lavish in biomass, that is for certain. The hive mind directed Fleet Leviathan to Baal for one reason, and one reason only. To destroy the red-clad power-armored warriors. To annihilate the Blood Angels. For the Tyranids knew that it was they, the red-clad warriors, that had caused them so many issues, had foiled them too many times to be simply ignored. And the hive mind directed a force so huge, so powerful, so almost limitless, that not all of the power of the sons of Sanguinius, not even as a full blood angel's legion, the combined might of near every successor chapter of the blood, had gathered in the one place and drawn a line in the sand, stating, you will come no further. Yet all of the might of the Astartes, on home ground, when dug in and prepared, when at the zenith of their fighting strength for the first time in 10,000 years. Even then, they could not stop the bugs. It took the intervention of the Neverborn, the Demonic, to strike down masses of Tyranids. Then it took the timely arrival of Lord Commander Rubute Gilliman, and an entire Indomitus fleet to end the confrontation. It took all of that 
to stop one splinter of just one hive fleet. One. And again, it was not blind flailing. It was a concerted attack by the Nids to wipe the Blood Angels from the face of the universe. Now it could still be possible to mark this up to the unfathomable movements of the Hives, if it were not for the actions of one of the most powerful psychers in the Imperium, the man once called Calistarius, reborn as Mephiston, the Lord of Death, the chief librarian of the Blood Angels chapter. Most psychers' minds implode under the pressure that is the shadow in the warp, that great wave of mental chatter that precedes the high fleet, negating messages from Psychana choirs, making warp travel next to impossible. The effect that drives the resident psychers on the world the Nids attack to become shattered dribbling or screeching madmen. Yet the mental fortitude and indomitable will of Mephiston revealed so much. For the Tyranids were indeed guided by an overarching sentience, the hive mind. And shockingly, this sentience was fully capable of more base urges and desires. It could and did hate. And it hated humanity, and the Blood Angels in particular. And this is so troubling in so many ways, for an animal on the attack can be blinded by its rage. Like a bull with a matador before it, such a beast can be positioned and redirected to the betterment of the hunter, and a hungry bear can be led by its stomach to a trap. Yet, the presence of this hive mind, the revelation that it does indeed think, not merely consume, it is horrific. For now the Imperium must contend with an adversary that does not only wish to survive, as I had previously thought and projected, no. The Tyranids can hate, and they can plan. And the variety in their fleets, their tactics, their roles, their abilities, now makes so much more sense. For they are being developed and improved upon. They are evolving not just individual templates to bugs, but evolving their entire methods and structure of warfare. Because they are not a dumb but prolific threat, as some state of the orcs. They are coordinated. They are consolidated, and they hate us. They hate us. Whether it be because we, humanity, have thwarted them, or if they have a detestation of all sentient life in the galaxy, is unknown. But all possibilities now require to be conceived, because the hive mind can indeed hate, and it can enjoy consuming its enemies, and that is the fundamental difference that is so concerning. For further discussion, please see my entry on the Tyranids, what are they up to? It has differing more specific information, but is of the same vein. It merely provides greater displays of the activities of the Nids thus far. But let us get back to the topic of today, the synapse of the Great Devourer, and the leader beasts don't make it possible, specifically the Tyranid warrior and its ilk. What exactly is a synapse of the Tyranids, and what are synapse creatures? And so, as usual, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, The Superorganism all Tyranids possess a common psychic bond, known as the Synapse. This bond enables the Tyranid swarms to think, perceive, and act as a single great superorganism, providing nearly seamless coordination and control within a Tyranid invasion force so numerous and extensive as to be completely uncontrollable otherwise. From the smallest feeder organisms to the microbes that decompose new biomass, to the huge tendril-like shoals of the hive fleet. Every Tyranid organism has a place within the will of the hive mind. The lesser and smaller Tyranid creatures are mindless and instinctive animals, plants and bacteria, performing functions with no conscious oversight or commitment, while larger and more complex creatures can make decisions appropriate to the situation 
and form an integral, if minuscule, part of the hive mind's distributed sentient awareness. The Synaptic Web Functioning in perfect unison, coordinated by powerful psychic imperatives transmitted through the Tyranid communal sentience that is the hive mind, Tyranid fleets, swarms and broods do not have a single command structure, but rather form a synaptic web of psychic influence and feedback. Situated within this tangled web are specialized synapse creatures, whose slightly more advanced brains function as psychic routers, buses and hubs, coordinating and policing the riotous cacophony of the collective brain power of a mass organism that is sometimes larger than most planets. Without the localized control provided by these organisms, the swarm can quickly falter, and some tyrannic creatures may revert to animalistic behaviors when individual will and situational instincts come into conflict. Often swarms will subdivide into smaller packs of creatures still capable of consensual behavior amongst themselves. The synapse creatures that channel the commands of the hive mind are mostly, if not all, potent individual psychers. How any of this is done, without drawing the attention of countless demons of chaos or the other psychic predatory entities of the warp, into the midst of the Tyranid Swarm is unknown, and possibly unknowable, to the humans of the Imperium. End quote. So we see that the hive mind is elegant, simple, and direct. It is like unto an ultimate cycle or enslaver, but its scope is vast, almost incomprehensible. For we humans suffer from reductionism to permit us to understand things of this magnitude, but it can be hard to really, truly take on the vastness of the situation. For it is unknown if the Tyranids are from one galaxy, having consumed and moved on, or if they are in fact the ruling power in not the galaxy, but the universe. It is possible that the Tyranids come from every galaxy surrounding the Milky Way, that they are inexhaustible in their numbers and might. Yet this one mind, this one sentience, this one consciousness, dominates and directs all. The Emperor of Mankind, the perpetual and combined might of all ancient human psychers, is the most powerful of his kind ever recorded. Some say he is the ultimate weapon of the ultimate psycho race, the old ones. Yet even he, at his prime, when he was not injured, not shattered, not a broken carcass on a golden throne, even he could only do so much. He could not continue to power the Astronomicon as its energy shone further and further into the galaxy. He had to rely on the youth and will, power and even souls of other humans. It does to this day. He could make an entire legion of space marines kneel, not by command or diktat, but by the power of his mind alone. Even then, his power is as nothing compared to that which must be the hive mind of the Tyranids. To coordinate and control so many minds, so many bodies, and potentially from so many galaxies across the universe, the sheer power is staggering. Yet for all this, the hive mind does what it can to lighten the burden, for it does not directly intervene in battles. It does not directly puppeteer every single Tyranid being. As we have heard, it has nodes, like the internet is sent through routers, which then send the message onwards. These beings, the synapse beasts, are what makes all of this possible. They allow the hive mind to be broadcast, yes, but they also have enough connection to it to be able to act autonomously. Like a captain giving orders to his sergeants, who then lead squads into a fray, the hive mind gives its commands, and the synapse beings broadcast them. But more than this, the synapse creatures are often able to take direct tactical command of the battlefield. They are the beings who can, despite what may be said, be able to think independently, and to then use their synapse attributes to direct the lesser beasts that surround them. They are linchpins in the hordes of the Tyranids. They are the wheels that make the vast wagon move forward, forever forward. So again, 
I'm not going to rewrite the prose describing the meat and veg of the matter. Hence, as usual, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote the Tyranid Warrior. Tyrannicus Gladius, the Tyranid Warrior, is one of the most common types of bioforms used by a Tyranid swarm. As Tyranids are constantly biologically adapting their forces to match their enemies' shifting strategies, Tyranid warriors are often seen in combat in many different subspecies intended for different battlefield and tactical functions. Tyranid warriors are among the most important Tyranid bioforms deployed by High Fleet in battle, as not only are they powerful and deadly creatures in their own right, but they also serve as Tyranid synapse creatures. The important bioforms intended to direct lesser Tyranid bioforms and forming the focal points of the Tyranid hive mind system of telepathic command. Tyranid warriors are large creatures, but still smaller than the massive Tyranid hive tyrants. They are fast and powerful, with the capability to be strong at ranged combat or in close quarters, in a similar fashion to the hive tyrants themselves. According to imperial research conducted by the Adeptus Mechanicus, the Tyrannicus Gladius species itself is highly adaptable to any battlefield role, with over 212 known variants of Tyranid warriors having been observed. Combining flying, walking, leaping bioforms with biomechanical symbiotes that serve as ranged weapons, like the Death Spitter, or assault symbiotes, like scything talons or rending claws, or both. This has caused one Imperial researcher, Magus Biologicus Locard, to claim that the Tyranid warrior is the most adaptable of any Tyranid species yet encountered. The Tyranid warrior is often a common trooper found in Tyranid armies. They have the ability to carry a wide variety of deadly biochemical, of deadly biomechanical weaponry and other upgrades, making them suitable to take on many roles in battle. They are easily able to bring valuable long-range firepower or high-volume short-range support to their Tyranid brethren. In addition, they can even be seen wielding close combat biomorphs, which are intentionally evolved Tyranid mutations, such as size like talons or shorter, incredibly sharp claws, which makes them fearsome melee combatants. Less commonly, they are seen in battle bearing great wings which allow them to swoop onto the battlefield and act as fast-moving assault troops and close-in air support. This variant is called the Winged Warrior by Imperial Forces, or the Tyrannicus Gladius Avius, subspecies by Mechanicus Magi Biologus, or to others, the Shrank. End quote. Now this blank text is elucidating, but I think it is rather dry, for it does not truly describe the danger of these beings. Tyranid warriors are not just larger Tyranids, they are not like orcs or other beings that are regularly faced by the forces of the Imperium. They are cunning, they are sly, they are powerful in not just their place and function in the army. The Tyranid warrior can equal an Astartes, a space marine, in combat, and that is no small thing at all. They are resilient to many forms of firepower developed against them, their kited armor practically bulletproof. Being more so with each and every encounter with new weaponry deployed against them. As stated, there are hundreds of variants of Tyranid Warrior already catalogued by the Imperium alone. But the main threat is that they are fast, strong, able and tenacious warriors. They can absorb a multitude of bolter rounds before going down can be faster and more accurate than a marine, can wield weapons that slice through plasteel and ceramite, or even auramite, as if it were paper mache. Their weaponry, both ranged and close quarters, evolves with each and every battle they fight, with each war they wage. And that is not the entirety of it. For there are even variations of this base form that act as small-scale generals, and they are the Tyranid Primes. Tyrannicus Gladius Primus, the Tyranid Warrior Prime, serves as a powerful synapse creature for Tyranid swarms and is a potent commander of Tyranid attacks. The Tyranid's leadership caste is difficult for Imperial commanders to identify 
and there is often the mistaken assumption that the larger a tyrannic creature is, the more important it is to the swarm. This is a mistake that has cost more than one Imperial officer his rank and countless men their lives. This is especially true for Tyranid Warrior Primes, an evolution of the standard Tyranid Warrior genus that has an elevated intelligence and a stronger link to the Tyranid Hive Mind. It has in fact only been in recent times that the Warrior Primes have been identified and reported to exist amongst the ranks of the various Hive Fleets. Though many Imperial Savants and the Adeptus Mechanicus Magus Biologus are quick to point out that this is less likely to be because they are a recent evolution, and more likely because they simply blend in with the other strands of Tyranid warriors. Primes are also being encountered in greater and greater numbers, perhaps as a direct response to the constantly evolving tactics of Imperial forces and High Fleet's needs to deal with the elevated Death Watch presence and the Orpheus Salient after several costly encounters. In military function, Tyranid warrior primes take on the role of, of junior officers within a Tyranid swarm, much in the same way as a hive tyrant might lead a full host of Tyranids. A warrior prime will oversee a smaller section of the battlefield or direct a smaller strike force of warriors. When close to a more powerful synapse creature, they would defer their control, acting instead like non-commissioned officers, often personally leading broods. However, should they find themselves alone, they can easily bind together those tyrannic creatures nearby into an effective fighting force and carry on with little trouble. In this way, a tyrannid warrior prime is just as capable of directing a swarm as a hive tyrant, and many an imperial officer has suffered as a result of underestimating their ability to project the hive mind and lead lesser tyrannid creatures. Tyranid warrior primes have earned fearsome reputations as resourceful and cunning tacticians, directing nearby tyrannic creatures through the hive mind to take advantage of terrain, enemy movements and other battlefield conditions that may enhance the outcome of a battle. It is a common failing amongst the leadership of the Imperium and even some Xenos races, like the Tau and the Eldar, that the Tyranids are nothing more than mindless animals, driven forward by the will of the hive mind with no thought of tactics or strategy. The truth is, of course, that creatures like the Tyranid Warrior Prime and the Hive Tyrant are just as capable as any other race's military commanders, perhaps more so, as they have literally unshakable faith in their troops and are fearless in battle because of their constant psychic connection to the Hive Mind, making them near-perfect combat commanders. End quote. And I hope you can now see the utterly jaw-dropping, buttock-clenching seriousness of the issue. For most commanders or leader bugs are perceived to be the larger warrior beasts, as stated. Be they devourer, warrior, or blaster beasts. But the Tyranids can field troops that are not actually large enough to pick out of the horde and annihilate. This means that these synaptic leaders, the Primes, can be secreted in nearly every thrust, every charge, every assault and the tactics of the First Tyrannic Wars will not be entirely efficient any longer. For as the Tyranids have developed more and larger bioweapons and warriors to bring the galaxy to heel, they are making it exceptionally difficult for the galactic defenders to pinpoint the strategic chains in the Tyranid armies that need to be exterminated. For who looks for a slightly different warrior, or even the warriors at all, when there are Hive Tyrants' massive psycho leaders Broodlords, dramatically floating neurothropes, Tervigans and Trigons, Maliceptors, Parasites of Mortrex, or even the dreaded Swarm Lord commanding an assault. The structure of the Tyranids is now so suffused at every level with synapse control, they can only be a reaction to the previously effective battle doctrines of the Space Marines and their ilk. The hive mind now smatters its forces with control at nearly every level. It is now advancing its fleets and its plans into the very heart of the Imperium, not merely worrying around the edges. The fleets are also arriving at the galactic western reaches, whereas previously they were mostly contained to the eastern and northern, and Leviathan, Hive Fleet Leviathan, comes from beneath the galactic plain. 
It could have its forces appear near anywhere from the core to holy terror itself. The Gatli powers are still squabbling amongst themselves, like sentient spaghetti, insulting each other on the plate as they are being slowly wound around the fork of the Tyranid fleet and being risen to the very maw of the Great Devourer. Alas, in the grim darkness of the far future, the chances of a consolidated force, a macro-alliance against the external threat, is next to impossible. Hence, is the galaxy on the very footstep of doom. But perhaps, just perhaps, your force, your army, will be the one to crack the code, to create new ways of fighting the Tyranid Horde, to finally develop doctrines that can match the ever-changing and evolving horror that is the Tyranid threat. Fight hard, my friends, for without a ground change in the way the galactic forces deal with the strain of Xenos terror, all the galaxy will become their banquet hall, and there will be nothing left to fight over. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. Now subscribe and like and all that good stuff if you enjoyed the video and wish me to make more. Competition on this platform is getting fierce, so do remember to support your favorite channels with these little nudges to the algorithm and join me every Friday as I take dives into the Warhammer universe or check out our other channels on natural history and mythology. Links in the video description. Patron merch, notification button, you know the boogaloo. Until then, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.